everyone here I am back with another tutorial on cake and this time I am going to be talking about white cake now if you like this kind of tutorial just make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the subscribe button you can also go to my channel and check the notification button so you receive notifications every time I post a tutorial before I start, I will tell you that I just added to my advanced tutorials the orchid tutorial for those of you who want to learn to do compass orchids. So if you're interested, the link is below. You can go visit my website for more information on it. Now let's get started with the tutorial. I will start with the definition of white cake. White cake is a butter cake in which the white but not the yolks of the eggs are used. When you use no yolks in the cake, it makes your cake whiter. A lot of brides want a very white cake, so it's used widely in wedding cakes. The original recipe uses butter, but these days some people would add shortening to make it even whiter. I will post the link to the full recipe in the comment box below. I will start with the butter, and I want to cream the butter so I can add some sugar to it. Save a quarter of the cup of the sugar for later. Between the sugar and the butter, I will cream this for between 15 to even 20 minutes. You want the mixture to look very creamy and it will be lighter in color. You want to scrape the bowl in between mixing. The mixture at the beginning will be a little bit lumpy, but the more time you spend mixing it, it will become very creamy. While my butter and sugar is mixing, I have plenty of time to get ready the rest of my ingredients. I like to sift my flour first. This way my flour will be aired already and then I can measure it. You will need two and one quarter cups of the flour. Make sure you don't pack the flour in your cup and you level it. The next thing would be my baking powder and the same, you want this level. I am adding 4 teaspoons of the baking powder. Remember, baking is a science, so you need perfect measurements. Now you will add some salt and I'm adding half a teaspoon of it. Now I'm coming back to the butter and I'm scraping everything down and checking the consistency of it. As you can see, it's starting to look really, really fluffy and creamy. I am going to put it back in the mixer and mix it for a little bit longer. Take this extra time to cover your pans in your favorite manner. You can use parchment, you can spray the pan, you can use butter and flour, you can use shortening and flour, or you can use something called goop. Goop is a homemade cake release that you can make yourself. It consists of the same amounts of flour, shortening, and vegetable oil. Now you can see how beautiful my butter looks like right now. It's creamy, it's lighter, and it's fluffy. This is what I look for in my butter when I'm making my cakes. Scrape the sides of your bowl and you're ready to add the rest of your ingredients. I will be adding four teaspoons of vanilla. A good quality vanilla makes a huge difference in the taste of your cake. Now I am adding a little bit of almond extract. I love to add almond extract it makes a huge difference in the flavor of my cakes. Once again, scrape your bowl and you're gonna be adding next your milk and your flour. When we're adding the milk and the flour, we always start with the dry ingredient first. The flour goes first and then you add the milk. A lot of people wonder why it has to be done this way. And the reason is because the butter and the sugar won't accept liquid into the mix. If you add the milk first, it just will get saturated and it won't mix as well and the liquid will stay at the top. This can result in a very heavy cake. So if you add the flour first, then it will mix with the butter and then it will accept the milk easily. So it's always best to follow your instructions and start with your dry ingredients and then alternate with the liquid. It is important not to over mix either, so after each addition of the dry ingredients, 
mixed only until most of it is incorporated. It is okay if you still see some dry flour in the mix. You don't want to over mix the flour because if you do so you can activate the gluten and it will make your cake very tough and not light. So check what I'm doing in the video and you can see I am putting the flour, mix a bit, add the milk and letting it mix enough. Then without stopping the mixer, I add more flour, mix a bit, add the milk. You keep doing that until everything is gone. Then I will take my spatula, clean the bowl, scrape everything down. And once I have done that, I will mix for around 30 seconds and I'm done. No over mixing, no under mixing. Now that we finished this part of our batter, it's time to work with the egg whites. This is a two part batter. For the egg whites, you want to put them in a very clean bowl, grease free. You can clean it with vinegar to make sure there's no grease in it. As you can see, I am using the whisk because I want to fluff my egg whites. I beat the egg whites until they reach a soft peak. Then I add a quarter cup of sugar I saved from the sugar that I used earlier. You want to keep beating the egg whites until they reach stiff peaks, but make sure you don't overbeat because then your cake might be dry. As soon as you reach this stage, you want to start mixing this with your batter. And the way you're going to do it is by folding it into the batter, but you're going to do it in separate stages. You don't want to do it all at once. Most of the time, I divide it in half and add it into stages. You want to fold this into the mixture. You want to make sure it's completely mixed, but do not over mix. Make sure you reach the bottom of your bowl. Once you have mixed some, add the rest and fold. As you mix, you want to make sure you're scraping the side of your bowl and you're mixing completely. You don't want to see the streaks of egg whites because then it will leave holes in your cake. Once you're done mixing, you want to pour your batter in the pan. Don't let your batter rest. This could make your cake not rise properly. So as soon as you're done, pour it in your pan and place it in the oven. And your oven should be already hot. Divide the batter in between two pans. I'm using eight by three. And as you can see, they're halfway full. Now I'm gonna show you a trick I use with my cakes. And this is very important if you hate tunneling. Tunneling in cake is not a bad thing. It's just not pretty. People like to see a very nice tight crumb. So if you take a knife and just go around all the batter, it usually tends to break the holes and the air pockets in your batter. You can see as I'm doing this, how the bubbles are just racing to the top. Once you do this, you want to bang your pan on a table. You can see as you bang how the bubbles race to the top. Check it out. You see that? Those are the bubbles that create tunneling. Do this to both pans and then you're ready to place your pans in the oven. I usually put it at 350 and for this cake I add a cake pan underneath filled with water. The water will create moisture and keep the cake moist. Once you place your cakes in the oven, drop the temperature down to 325. It takes for me to bake these cakes around 40 minutes but this might change depending on your oven. This cake does tend to shrink a little bit. It's not a big deal, flavor will be there, but if you're really picky about your cake shrinking a little bit, I would suggest to use parchment paper. Just basically cover your pan with parchment paper and do a color. Most of the time, this will help with the shrinkage. Once you're done, you wanna flip your cakes. Make sure to seal them well with plastic, and this is important to me because this will make sure that the cake doesn't dry and place them in the fridge overnight so they get cooled and this way you can ice them easily. White cake is a very delicate cake. It can be used for wedding cakes, 
is a little bit hard to use for sculpted cakes, so I would avoid it for them. This cake is very moist, you will not need simple syrup for it unless you want to add more flavor to it. You do need to make sure that you don't overbake the cake as overbaking can make your cake dry and also seal your cake to avoid losing moisture. I will post the link to the recipe in the comment box below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like tutorials about cake decorating and visit me in Facebook and Instagram. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, ta-ta!